presented by First Commonwealth Bank here on WCCS, AM 1160 and FM 101.1. Well, let's meet him. He is the new Chief Medical Officer at the Indiana Regional Medical Center. He's Dr. Brian Hawthorne joining us in the studio and uh, hazarding the weather here on our honors roadways here in Indiana Borough. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you with us here today. It's good to have you at the Indiana Regional Medical Center. Now, you've been here for how long? Been here about four months. Mm -hmm. Came up here from uh, Morgantown, West Virginia, where I lived for 20 years. Uh But the snow that you were telling me, the snow that we're seeing out here, while it's not all that common in Morgantown, you're from Syracuse, so you know about the white stuff a little bit. Yeah, I grew up uh, just off the shore of Lake Ontario, so I know what (laughs) lake effect snow is. We would get about 200 inches of snow every season. Wow. Wow. So this is probably no problem for you. Let's talk a little bit about your time here at the Indiana Regional Medical Center, all the hopes and dreams that you have for what's happening at IRMC and here in the community. There was this report that came out yesterday rating the health and the availabilities of uh, medical practices, services um, for every state in the, in the nation. Pennsylvania finished in about the middle, which in every study we finish, doesn't matter what the topic is, Pennsylvania is always in the middle. As you have come on, to IRMC, I'm sure that uh, you've seen uh, the way that people around here, um, their health is impacted by the environment in which they live, uh, their jobs, uh, and, and, and all of those health issues that doctors have to pay attention to. How do you find it compared to other areas that you have uh, been? Of course, coming from West Virginia, that's a state that usually ranks in the bottom of three in every category. It's last in this report, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it's always in the bottom three down there with Mississippi, Arkansas, and Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, so this uh, this community, compared to where I came from, actually uh, has less of the problems like obesity, smoking, opioids, uh, mm. But uh, there certainly are problems in this community, and I'm glad to be uh, part of IRMC to help uh, the community solve these uh, community health needs. And as you've come on board, of course, uh, you've seen what IRMC has to offer, and um, there are always adjustments, particularly in your field, um, recruiting this type of physician to meet this particular need, uh, another physician for for this office over here, and uh, and you have to be intimately involved in all of that, don't you? Yeah, I spend uh, a lot of my time on f- physician recruiting. Uh, I think uh, to be a premier hospital, it starts with having the best physicians. Uh, I really feel strongly that uh, I don't want to bring a physician here to IRMC just to fill a, a, a gap. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, bad organizations hire someone uh, that fits the job description, but great organizations hire the right person for their team. Yeah. And that's really important with physicians to, to get the best quality physicians. Yeah. And, and a part of that has to be the ability to retain them and, and keep them working here within the community. So, and I don't know how much personality uh, and their ambitions play into actually getting them to come here to IRMC, but that has to play some role in it, does it not? Sure. I, Probably the easiest recruits are people who grew up around this area or have some ties to the area or perhaps their significant other is from this area. Um, But uh, there's a lot to offer here in Indiana, and uh, a lot of people like the small-town life. Uh, A lot of physicians want to work in an independent community hospital like IRMC as opposed to one of the giant health systems like a UPMC or Allegheny Health Network. Yeah, and the facility itself. Uh, you know, we like to brag on it here, but you've seen every type of medical facility there is out there in large communities, small communities, communities such as Indiana. Um, I would assume that IRMC's facility, its campus, um, has to be a major recruiting tool. Yeah, I think they have a a beautiful campus. Uh, I mean, any room you're in, you look out, you have a great view. They have plenty of free parking, which a lot of hospitals, you're taking even the employees have to take a shuttle bus into work uh, yeah. from a parking lot. So um, in the facility, there's been major upgrades uh, with a completely renovated operating room, completely renovated ICU. Uh, so really, uh, I'm proud of the facility and all the work they've done and all the investment that's gone into making it uh, a, rem- a remarkable facility. Yeah, the building is one thing. Um, the service is able to be offered another thing. It really, though, does come down to people, does it not? 
Absolutely. And uh, one of the things that attracted me to this job, because I really could have gone anywhere, um, was reading their vision statement. And their, their vision statement is very simple, to be the best community hospital in the country. Wow. Uh, that's bold, but I liked it because I don't want to work somewhere that uh, enjoys mediocr- mediocrity. I want to work somewhere that strives to be the very best. And uh, so that really resonated with me now you could put out a position statement such as that and say okay that sounds good but then there have to be tangible steps toward that goal Um, and you have to be a part of that solution too Um, as you have uh, taken on this role here at indiana regional medical center uh, i'm sure there are tangible steps that you take uh, and and that your whole staff does Uh, talk if you would a little bit about how that whole goal Um, comes to be because it can't just be a statement it has to be something that you are working toward well you know great organizations are really mission driven and uh, since I started here uh, I've really been walking around doing a lot of rounds uh, on all of the floors talking to employees and talking about the mission the vision and the values of IRMC Uh, it really should be uh, why we get up in the morning and, and why we go to work at the hospital. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you get so wrapped up in the day-to-day uh, care of the patients, you, you kind of forget the big picture. So I'm really uh, big on the, the mission, vision, values of the organization. Uh, and toward that end, uh, I, that my daily duties, like physician recruiting, I, I try to fulfill that mission and vision. And you bring to the job, of course, so your background as a physician. Now, what did you have a specialty uh, that you you followed, or was a general practitioner? Or? I was a, a family medicine doctor mm-hmm. for 15 years. I had a private practice, uh, and then I went into administrative role uh, for five years. Uh, I was chief medical officer in Morgantown. So that sort of a background uh, will really get you in tune with patient needs as much as with physician needs. That has to be a strength. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think... Being a physician executive leader has uh, great advantages uh, as, as opposed to just coming up as a uh, professional administrator because mm-hmm. you, you've been a physician, you've been at the bedside, you've worked uh, you know, right next to the rest of the healthcare team, uh, the nurses and therapists. So I think you have a much deeper understanding of the clinical side uh, so you can blend that with the uh, financial needs of the organization. We're talking with Dr. Brian Hawthorne this morning. He's the new chief medical officer at the Indiana Regional Medical Center, and we're getting to know him, having been here in Indiana for about four months. So you're approaching that half-year mark and uh, entering into a new year. Uh, of course, uh, everybody thinks about a new year, a fresh start. So where do you see IRMC going in terms of physician recruitment, uh, maybe expansion of services within the next five or ten years? I, you know, one of our goals is to remain an independent community hospital, and uh, to achieve that goal, we need to continue to grow and uh, invest in our services. I think uh, in the past year, they've done a tremendous job at growing some programs like their uh, cardiology uh, invasive program, their uh, robotics program, their hospitalist program, their intensive care program. So I just want to keep that momentum going forward into the next year. Uh, We do have some plans to grow some additional services. Uh, I think anything we can do to provide care here locally in Indiana to keep people from having to travel uh, is a great benefit to the community, and that's that's why we exist in the first place. Yeah, the interventional cardiology program is a big part of that. The 3D mammography technology that IRMC takes on. One of the things we note that is... You know, when IRMC jumps in board, jumps in to to a particular area of concern and tries to upgrade that program, they go right for the top. I mean, they get the best technology that there is out there. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Uh, our robot, for example, that we use for robotic surgery, it is the state-of-the-art robot. There's not another one in this region. Uh, it, it, uh, it's hard to explain the technical specifications, but... Uh, as the uh, patient is uh, moved during the surgery, the table moves with the patient uh, in uh, perfect precision. Uh, most hospitals uh, that have robots uh, in our region 
they don't have that kind of technology and it makes a big difference it makes the cases safer it makes the the cases uh, much shorter Dr. Brian Hawthorne with us here this morning. Thanks for coming in to visit with us and trudging through the snow to get here. Uh, we appreciate your time this morning and look forward to uh, to your tenure here at IRMC. And wish you the best of luck. Thanks for being with us today. Well, thank you. It's an honor and privilege to be here. It is Indiana in the morning here on AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM.